the only one that acknowledges it anyway because this whole thing of the coronavirus and the shutdown that we've been in it, i want to say it's been a month right uh, give or take but it's been very very fascinating to see the reaction of the people people become more argumentative stir crazy cabin fever they start doing things they wouldn't normally do and particularly like i'm seeing timelines now with people putting up more pictures and throwback thursdays every day kind of shit like they have nothing to update uh social media is driving them like damn what, what the fuck do i do and you see people arguing i stayed off of it man I, i've been this is introvert heaven this this whole thing I mean, I'm not trying to make any light of anything. I mean, obviously, we're going to get through it. Even though there's been, what, over 200,000 cases in the United States, by far the most in the world. But that makes sense because we don't pay attention. Like, this is the thing. You have a, a, a certain demographic of America that feels like that, that shit's not going to bother me. That shit's not going to impact me. So I'm going to go about living my life as normal. I'm going to go travel. I'm going to go do whatever X, Y, and Z. And that's just the beauty of this country. But then the, the lack of common sense of people, right? Because... <clears throat> wow, this is my stance on it with the whole coronavirus is that, yes, it's statistically you can compare it to other diseases that we've had, other plagues, and it's nowhere near as fatal. I get that. But guess what? People are still dying. This is something new to our immune system. And it's very contagious. It got here from fucking China in less than two months. It's like, what? in the first case was in December. So imagine all the shit that was coming in. Now we're in April and everybody in the country has it. Meaning a case. So yeah, this is all around the fucking world. And it's not that people are going to die. Obviously, they're going to have a terrible time with it. And hopefully everyone makes it out of it. But the ignorance. I mean, think about the spring breakers. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, that's exactly the, the, the mentality that we have out here. People are like, hey, fuck it. And the hotels are not going to refund your money either. I had to fucking go through my bank. I had to just to give you a little tip that if you have any trips planned that are in that timeline, you just got to go to your bank and say, hey, man, just like that, that transaction, man, I'm not I'm not going to be able to make it, you know, like because of the fact that, hey, man, you know, that's just not it's just not going to work. It's just not it's not going to happen. So I don't know. I just uh, I, I go through that mindset, man, and. It's a very interesting time that we live in and seeing people paranoid. People are watching the same shit. Uh, people are talking about this one Tiger King. I'm, I'm not going to see it. It's not my thing. And it's a, it's just a weird thing to get the polls because from my point of view, every day has been the same. I, I do my work. I barely go in. I don't fraternize with people. I don't really go out. That's what I was telling somebody. I was like, you know, I rarely go out. So it's not like you don't catch me at the bar every week. It's like I, I, I am single. Well, I'm not single, but, you know, I'm living that, like, married life at home. What am I doing all weekend? Playing video games, watching YouTube videos, watching podcasts, or listening to podcasts. That's it. And I love my little space. Next thing you know, it's like 10 o'clock at night. You're like, fuck, where did the day go? Uh. So that's the, the life and times for me, man. But I hope everyone is doing well, everyone. I know there's some scares. I know that for me, uh, we've had some people nearby that have been in their work environments have gotten it. Not themselves personally, but people in the office they work in have gotten it. You don't want that to obviously, obviously I don't want to get it because I have my daughter, you know, and I have to. That's the thing about me, man. I, I'm a one man show. So if, if I get sick, fuck, I, I got to quarantine myself, you know, but anyway, I was. I was uh, having a discussion about things and, you know, during the journey of, of uh, getting to know people, getting to know one another, you have uh, differences and things and misinterpretations and and it's a, it's a very interesting thing to, I, I guess at this stage in life, to, to be able to welcome uh, conversations, to welcome differences, to welcome and, and be okay at the end of the day. Uh, that's something that is very evident to me in social media. You don't have any of that. People are arguing back and forth. Uh, you have people that are at, at the end. It doesn't help anybody to to be confrontational. It's more of, OK, let's welcome in the energy. Let's welcome in the person. OK, that's strongly how you feel about it. And then you try to give a counterpoint to that. And and if they still steadfast on it, there's nothing. You know, you're not going to change people's mind at all. 
but I love when I'm in connection with somebody, with people all around me, my friends, and and, and good people that are in the same wavelength, you know, and the new people that I've integrated. It's been an amazing thing to, to have these conversations, these thoughts, and, and, and to have this type of thinking, you know, and and I think that one of the things that was uh, recently in the conversations was uh, one of the elements of being called out, man, for maybe being insensitive. You know, like I'm a person that I don't, I, I didn't grow up being nurtured. <laughs> so it's it's hard for me to, when so, I see somebody fall and they're fucking like, okay, all right, what are you going to do? You going to get up? All right, great. You know, I, unless I see like the leg broken or like blood splattering everywhere, then the, obviously I'll, I'll, I'll come into the rescue. But yeah, you know, you fall on your ass, you walk, you trip, you're clumsy as fuck. I'm just going to be like, I'm just going to look at you. I'm not going to help you. <laughs> you know, and that was something that was brought up to my attention about you, you really don't uh, have any empathy, right? Or sympathy. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you about that. Because I, I, I grew up in a mindset where you, you have to get yourself up. You have to, it's like, as long as shit ain't broken, you get your ass up. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? You want me to go ahead and carry, check your temperature, and you, you want me to... Go ahead and call nine one one. What do you want me to do? You know, that's um. But you know, I'm going extreme here. But it, it, and I, you know, I started thinking about it. Where I mean, growing up, I, I didn't get that kind of nurturing. I didn't get that kind of. And I think it comes across to people as, as being stoic and and not having any emotions. And it, it's when you try to unwire behaviors. I always say this, and and that's showing emotion is something that I could do. But in certain instances. I say to myself, well, you, you know, I, I would do that with my daughter all the time because she was very, very soft and she's a little snowflake, a little rainbow, p- pure of love. Right. So she, when she was a kid, she would get scabs, she would get cuts and shit. And, and I'd be like, well, get up. And she'd start crying all of a sudden. And it'd be like a little cut where you could put like a little band. It'll be fine. But she'll be grabbing it and just hobbling like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. My girl, get up. I'm not going to help you. Get the fuck up. That's a little cup, man. I used to get those like twice a day. I'll come home with scars all over. I still have scars from fucking childhood that, that growing up, man. All over my fucking body. She, you know, I'm not. And, and I guess that's the way I grew up. So I don't I don't view it as I'm still here, right? So when I see somebody going through, I'm like, yeah, you'll be all right. I mean, it's not like a car accident. It's not like. Uh, uh, you know, fucking somebody elbowing you in the fucking face and you know, broken nose, broken face, uh, fucking teeth, fucking snapping out out of your fucking face. These are di- these are different incidents. I'm telling you, by the way, uh, fucking bro- broken elbow, broken wrist, uh, fucked up knee, ankles broken. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I mean, I've broken a lot of shit, and uh, I mean, dislocated finger right now that hasn't gone back in place, you know, permanently. It's, it's like, you know, going on it. And it's like, I don't know. I just deal with it. It's like when it comes to pain and threshold of pain, I don't know. I mean, I went on a run this morning trying to get back into it. And, and I, I could feel my other Achilles just like, bro, I want to pop too. I want to pop. I want to pop. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, you, you, you're not popping. <laughs> you, you, you're going you're gonna to stay where, where you're at. We're doing a slow roll on this one, but. You know, I, my my lack of sympathy at times just comes from a place of being self-reliant. I don't know. You know, just being a person that growing up, you realize this, especially in my background. No one gives a fuck really about your life and what you're doing. And I'm not saying that people didn't help and people didn't want to see you do better. But all in all, if, if you're not helping yourself, no one's going to help you. Right, because I think people get tired of the whole sympathy and woes me kind of shit, and that's the mindset I have. I mean, if I can't get up out of my fucking bed, then I'm not gonna ask for you know, I'm not gonna be having people waiting for me or depend on me. I mean, that's one of the things I, I went through so much. I went through hernia surgery, I went through a couple of knee surgeries, Achilles surgeries, and and it's like I'm sitting there not being bothered. I, I don't care. Like, let me be. Let me be. And that car accident, man, when you get rear-ended on the highway, when the guy was doing 60 and in the report, I thought I spun out once and it said three times. I'm like, whoa, fuck, man. I spun out three times to the railing. And then the guys in the ambulance were like, man, we thought you were fucked up because of the way the car looked. I'm like, Ugh. you know, I got I lucked out, man. 
I, I, I don't know. I, I kept all my limbs in place, and I don't know. It's um, it, it's it's a weird thing to because I, I just don't think of anything being a big deal, and a lot of it has to do with the pain. And it's a shame, maybe. Maybe it's a shame that I've been through so much pain and suffering that I don't realize it, and, and it's one of those things I dismiss it. It's like ah, another one, another one. Doesn't bother me. I think the emotional ones bother me more, right? Because we we invest in other people. We we definitely have time involved, and and then when you just don't see like the mutual energy, the the, the mutual love, where it's expressed differently, where your egos hurt, it, then it's like you know I, I'm just like I, I can't I can't be that. I'd rather, I'd rather stay here. You know I'm the biggest extrovert introvert there is. You know, like when I go out, I don't like going out to the bar here locally. I like going out to Vegas. I like going out to L.A. I like going out to Miami. <laughs> yeah, I could go out to the cigar bar here in town nah, occasionally, sure. But, you know, the way I look at it is like, what am I going to do? My success rate is zero. <laughs> I don't I don't bring any I don't bring any action home. Right. I mean, I don't I, now I'm getting to an age where everybody is, is definitely younger. And and then obviously the people that are out there, it, it's a wrong crowd. You know, these people just love to drink all the fucking time or they're just, uh, you know, they're talking about money. They just kind of, you know, that's the one thing that's weird, right? That I, I there were a couple phone calls I had this week and I just always notice people uh, just grandstanding on, on their own resume. Like they're telling you who they are. Yeah, you know, I'm just this and I make this much and I got this deal going on and that deal. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? Right? I mean, good for you. I mean, good for you. I, I'm, I'm happy for you. But it, it is weird to see people validate themselves with such explanations. It's, um, but anyway, I mean, I just kind of rambled there off the chain. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, um, you know, I recognize that I'm, I'm a person that is not in tune with being sensitive like i think with my daughter i am but when i see the over theatrics of somebody not uh not taking up responsibility i i tend to be more helpful to people that want to help themselves but if you're trying to cry victim or you know or let's just say you, you do something it's like dude like right you know I, I got my own shit to deal with and i re- and i realized that. that that was the thing i realized that around 16 17 all the crying i did my family wasn't going to come in and help me. All the crying I did and feeling sorry for myself, it was like, my dad's not going to come here. My family's not going to come here. They're not looking for me. They're not inquiring about me. I haven't gotten one Christmas gift for anybody of those fuckers. Or not even a car, not even a birthday, not even nothing. So it's like, why am I waiting around for them to come and save me and help me from the shit that I'm dealing with? No, they didn't. So, And I remember telling that to a relative. I was like, I had to, and they didn't take this very nicely. I said, I had to imagine all of you were dead because I wasn't getting that support that I needed during those formative years. And it's something I had to, whether it was your fault or not, that was the reality. You know, I always go back to that. We, we, No matter what, I don't want to place blame on them. It's just what, but what it is is that this was the circumstance. This is how I dealt with it. I know you don't like it, but that's how I had to deal with it to move on. And I know when it comes to sympathy and empathy, I'm 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 very stoic about it. I I mean I have people all the time in my line of work where they'll give me a sob story about X, Y, and Z, and I'm like, listen, I hear you, but no, you know, like I don't I, I don't I don't care. <laughs> I, I'd be the greatest debt collector if that if that was to be like a profession. I could make money and work three hours. I'll do it because I they'd be like they'll tell me their sob story. Oh my God. The light cut off, and I'm going through a divorce, and I'm like, mm, I hear you. I hear you, man. I've been through that divorce, too, man. Yeah, I don't got no one helping me, man. Yeah. You know, I grew up, oh, man, you know, oh, yeah, man, I know how it is, man. I grew up on uh, welfare, man, food stamps, all that good shit. I remember what the, what the you know, the $5 coupon looks like. I remember when I had a 20, like, whoa, you know, we had 20, like a food food stamp. It was fucking big money. I mean, you can go, like, get, get that WIC, the WIC. You get all the fucking cornflakes you, you you fucking need it. It's fucking great, man. But um, yeah, so I I think that's where, you know, I I don't I don't really have any sympathy or it, it's very rare that I do. And when I see others struggle, I mean, I, I want to see them get pick themselves up. I, I want them to see what they're made out of. It's like you know, but if you're crying to me and then and you're trying to feel sorry and, and trying to have me cry, don't get me wrong. If 
it, it, it depends on the person, right? If it's my daughter and you're crying, I mean, I, I don't know. Tough love sometimes. I, I'm, I'm a big component of it. I mean,